After winning the second division championship, 96-97 was a season of transition for Steve McMahon's newly promoted side. Mission was accomplished when a bright start secured the Robins' place in the first division. Early wins included the impressive 3-0 thrashing of promotion-bound Barnsley, illuminated by a great goal by Ty Gooden. New signing Mark Walters got on the score sheet when Swindon notched their biggest win of the season, a 6-0 thrashing of Huddersfield. But for many Robins fans, the highlight of the season was Marlon Broom's outstanding goal against Birmingham. This exclusive programme features all the season's best action. We'll also be paying tribute to Player of the Year, Fraser Digby. Digby won the fans' vote despite missing the season's first 20 matches. Aussie Frank Talia was the Robins' first choice goalkeeper when the season kicked off at Carrow Road. Talia was beaten twice in the first half as the Canaries soared into a winning lead. Andy Johnson pulling the home side in front after 26 minutes. Talia caught out in a crowded six-yard box. But there was nothing Talia could do when the Canaries made it 2-0 ten minutes later. Robert Fleck produced a stunning strike that gave newly promoted Swindon an early taste of the gap between the first and second divisions. There was no way back for the Robins, but McMahon's men did emerge with some credit and a superb piece of goalkeeping by Brian Gunn denied the Robins a deserved consolation. Steve Finney's close-range drive foiled by the veteran Canaries keeper and the woodwork. That was the nearest Swindon came to getting on the score sheet. The first home match of the season was a Coca-Cola Cup tie with Wolves. Mark McGee's men, billed as one of the promotion favourites in the league, had kicked off their season with a 3-1 win at Grimsby. Allison. Finney has continued his run. Horlock also in the penalty area. The number 11 leaves it. Finney miss kicked. And it still comes out to Drysdale. Had he got that on his left foot, Wolves might have been in trouble. Well, that was a difficult chance, Drysdale. Finney's was a chance. And it's a pity because he turned Richards beautifully in the halfway line. Controlled a really difficult ball. Spun him beautifully. And had he got on the end of that and connected, well, he would have deserved it. Horlock. Finney. And now Allison. Allison's done well, but surrounded by Wolves players and still managed to find a way out to Paul Allen. Here's Walters. I've got some strength in the box here. If he can get the cross in, Walters, and he can. And Allison's there. Well, that's an absolute peach of a goal. Allison started it, Allison finished it. How he was able to wriggle out of that central midfield area and find the ball wide, I don't know. But Walters has threatened to do this from the first minute. He finally gets the cross absolutely right. Dean Richard just pauses for a second, but Allison Stryker's instinct takes him in in front of Richards. And from then on, well, it's a simple header really, down onto the ground, and he gives still no chance. That's a super goal in anyone's language. Well, Wolves' formidable partnership of Roberts and Bull haven't had much joy so far tonight. They will argue the delivery hasn't been too clever to them. Now, can Roberts make something of this up and under? The goalkeeper did well. And Horlock in a bit of trouble here. Tried to play it away, and Roberts could punish him for that. And still... That was all, I think, because Horlock tried to play his way out of danger when a hoof up the park would have been a better uh, idea. Well, if it was an example of Rose Ed, then this is it. As this drops down to Horlock, you put your foot round it. You don't try pretty football in there when you're under pressure. It's a great ball back in. Goalkeeper does ever so well. And that well could be a free kick. You watch here as it sets up. Froggett goes in with his foot high. But Robinson was brave. He kept his eye on the ball. And the corner's launched in beyond the head of Roberts. And good save by Talia. I'm not sure he knew an awful lot about that. I mean, Bull hit that with such power. But he got his body in the way, as he did with Robert's header. And that's all you do if you're a goalkeeper. They misjudge it totally. Bull strikes it really well. Good positioning. It's as close as Wolves have come, certainly in this half, possibly in the match, and they've given it away to Walters here. Can he finish it off? Allison, Leach, yes, 2-0 to Swindon.
Scott Leach, his first goal for the club. Well, Alisson's a big part to play in. Well, he can hold his head, Mark Atkins. Well, a costly error. I thought Mark Walters had chosen the wrong option here. Daly's on the ball, and I'm thinking, go on, do it yourself, do it yourself. I didn't think he gave Alisson a chance of scoring. But once again, Alisson held it up well. And what he's done all night, he's fed his midfield players really well with little layoffs. And he does it yet again. I didn't think Alisson could score here. So he holds it up, feeds it to Leach's left side, and he drills it through the goalkeeper. A healthy first leg advantage makes Swindon favourites to reach round two. Meanwhile, the first league match at the county ground is against Port Vale, and the Robins are given a first half roasting, saved by the linesman's offside flag, and then the woodwork as Vale dominate the early exchanges. McCarthy's header had Talia well beaten. Vale finally got the lead they deserved on 32 minutes when John McCarthy broke the deadlock with a marvellous strike. The Robins were lucky to still be in contention and they made Vale pay for their missed chances when Mark Robinson smacked home a 60-second minute free kick. Steve McMahon made four changes for the next match against Oldham. Skipper Sean Taylor among the players left out. Steve Coe, good turn. Steve Coe with the lob just over the bar. Seagraves cross. Allison's header. Swindon Town's goal. Swindon Town one, Oldham nil. McCarthy at the far post. Richardson just scrambled away off the line. Allison sets it for Horlock. Falls to Coe. Tees it up for Leach. Kept out by Hallworth. Robinson at the far post. Denied by the defender. Horlock saved. August ends on a high note at Roots Hall, where Peter Thorne makes his first start of the new campaign. Duras on the touchline. Seagraves. Thorne challenging. Watson's shot. Watson's goal! Just about the perfect half volley from Kevin Watson to open his swim and town account and give them the lead here at South End. Thorne doing enough, Coe ducking and Watson striking. Rysdale tracking back, now Robinson. Good trap, good touch by Steve Coe. Space for him here. There's a goal for him here as well. 2-0 Swindon Town. Steve Coe with a fine individual effort. Burn the substitute, 2-1. He's made his mark in no uncertain terms and giving the home side a glimmer of hope. South End 1, Swindon Town 2, Fraser Digby with no chance. Finney on the wing. Thorn. Sullivan, you're the substitute with an overlap on here. That's Drysdale's first time cross. Finney's flying header 3 1. Swindon Town 3, South End 1. The super sub strikes. First time cross, and there's only one Stevie Finney. Victory over South End is followed by another boost for the Robins when Steve McMahon rules himself out of the running for the vacant manager's job at Main Road. McMahon confirms he's staying at Swindon when he signed a new contract. Meanwhile, September begins with a Coca-Cola Cup return leg with Wolves. Swindon hold a crucial two-goal advantage from the first encounter. Across, finding Roberts. Was that a handball? The referee says no. And the shot is deflected in by Osborne. And Wolves have pulled the goal back already. But the Robins kept the Wolves at bay for the next 85 minutes to claim their place in round three. Sean Taylor joins Bristol City for £100,000 on the eve of the trip to Grimsby. 
where the home side take control with a first half double from Clive Mendonca. A quality finish by the Grimsby striker inside the first eight minutes. But the Robins weren't happy with goal number two. Grimsby winning a penalty when John McDermott went down in the box. Referee Franklin ignored Swindon's claims that McDermott had dived. Mendonca ends the argument when he leaves Talia with no chance from the spot. 2-0 to Grimsby. Swindon staged a brave second half fight back and the deficit was reduced six minutes after the restart when Peter Thorne set up Steve Cowell. The sweetest of finishes by Cowell, his second goal of the season. But that was the end of the goal scoring and Grimsby held on to claim all three points. Fit again, Mark Walters was back in the starting lineup at home to Portsmouth. But the losing sequence continued when former Swindon star Alan McLaughlin landed the only goal of the match. McLaughlin's winner coming 17 minutes from time. Three days later came the chance to make amends against Tranmere. And this time it was the Robins who won a first half penalty. Mark Walters fell by Sean Teal. Walters got up to take the kick himself and duly claimed his first goal for the Robins. The clinching goal came 14 minutes from time when Rovers failed to clear Kevin Watson's free kick. Danny Coyne could only punch to the edge of the box and Kevin Horlock was well placed to fire home his first goal of the season. Chanmere did manage a late consolation in the dying seconds. Veteran marksman John Aldridge made the final score 2-1 but Swindon good value for their first win in four matches. The third home match in the week was the Coca-Cola Cup tie with Queen's Park Rangers. The second round contest another two-legged affair. Paul Allen's involved, Wayne O'Sullivan, Frederick Duras, now Mark Walters with a turn, with a shot, with a goal, in off the post. Swindon Town 1, Queen's Park Rangers nil. He took a deflection, but it will be credited to Mark Walters. Three ways to play on. Murray pokes it through to Dicio, all square. In front of the visiting supporters, Daniel Dicio milks the applause for his equalising goal. Sinclair again. Impey ran the keeper, 2-1, another vital away goal. Rangers double blast gives them a one goal advantage to take back to Shepherd's Bush. Meanwhile Loftus Road is the venue when the two sides meet again in the league. Jackson needs to hold it because Sinclair needs to run himself back on side. Good challenge by McDonald, but danger now for Queen's Park Rangers. The shot comes in. Oh, it's a goal for Swindon Town. A lovely strike. And it's Steve Cow who gets the goal. Just more or less a minute after Queen's Park Rangers themselves nearly took the lead. Murray. And here's Matt Jackson. Murray has made great grounds. Jackson to Brazier. Impey. Now Barker. Barker. Inside the area. Still, cross comes in, comes down, and Paul Murray's shot, it's in the back of the net! Queen's Park Rangers have equalised! The third meeting between the two sides is the Coca-Cola Cup second round, second leg. This is O'Sullivan for Swindon. Leach to Horlock, who missed an excellent opportunity, probably the best of the match, with the possible exception of the Dikio header. Oh, O'Sullivan! Swindon have taken the lead. It was a speculative ball forward, and it was Wayne O'Sullivan who got his nut to it. And we've played 42 minutes. Three minutes to half time. It was Leach still carrying the towel from that injury. And O'Sullivan, you've got to blame Jurgen Sommer for that, really. 
he arrived very very late and O'Sullivan just dinked it over him so the sides are level on aggregate and what a time to score a goal Sommer will definitely blame himself for that one we're 10 minutes into the second half Swindon lead QPR by a goal to nil the sides lock 2-2 on aggregate Sinclair flicks on you'll get another chance here Horlock hustles him out of it but Barker finds ground this is better from Queen's Park Rangers lovely skill by Sinclair Murray good looking cross up goes Dikio gets it in QPR have equalised it's Murray I think who's got the goal no it's Brazier Brazier hustled in Dikio as we expected was the danger man he won the header and Brazier kept his call in a crowded penalty area lovely ball in by Murray Dikio won the header and Brazier put it between Talia's legs QPR are back on level terms QPR 1, Swindon 1 and QPR lead on aggregate Swindon have just over 25 minutes to take this match to extra time Rangers lead 3-2 on aggregate this is Walters that's a decent cross up goes Allison. they're back in front Swindon there was no challenge once again it was Walters who got clear on the right the cross was very good indeed but you would have expected the keeper maybe to come for it and Allison has given Swindon the lead now in fairness to Sommer that was quite a deep cross and the big centre forward has tucked that away again lovely skills by Walters and the header was firm and he was right in the corner this is Elkins outside him is Horlock that's a decent cross up goes Coe Barker got there before him away by Brevet this is Walters well he did one he's done well Walters this is O'Sullivan out wide him now that was a bad ball from O'Sullivan but Swindon have it back again Horlock flicks in Allison bounces down now for Seagraves the skipper good pressure by Swindon Robinson can he get the cross in it's a decent one there's a real chance for Thorne it's more than a real chance he's buried it Thorne the substitute the man who came down from Blackburn has done the business here for Swindon Peter Thorne 10 minutes into the first period of extra time and Swindon lead by three goals to two he did so well there Thorne excellent finish and he's been threatening to do that Swindon lead by four goals to three on the night excuse me 3-1 on the night 4-3 on aggregate a dramatic victory for the Robins Steve McMahon's men good value for a place in round three meanwhile it's back to league duty and the season's third encounter with Wolves push through to Ferguson pull ahead of him Ferguson will have to go alone can he finish it's gone in Horlock came back to try and hold off Dan Ferguson but he's forced it in for the opening goal time of the first half well there's was, there was some good skill by Ferguson he had a little bit of luck but when he, the opportunity breaks for him he receives the ball here he goes through he gets the nuts he's going through he's taking his time Culverhouse who won the corner in the first place brilliant ball to Walters More skills from Walters, looking for Wayne Allison! Well, that was a similar spot from where Walters created the goal in the Coca-Cola Cup and uh, 
Swindon scored on that particular occasion. He's outside, he's going to take on the defender. He's tried his trick, he's worked again, he's clipped a good crossing. Allenson's under pressure there from Venus, and uh, his uh, header for him is unfortunately because he's off target. But another good cross by Walters there. Allison's under pressure, and one's got to say it's good defending by Venus that he hasn't allowed him a lot of space to uh, have a free header. Beguiling skills from Walters. Actually played 11 games on loan at Wolves, including one against Swindon. Venus with this free kick, and Roberts arriving, that's a brilliant save, fantastic reaction from Talia. Yes, a very good free kick, well worked, a good left-footed uh, delivery in here, you can see there's good movement by the Wolves players, it comes in there, and Ewan Roberts gets ahead, I'm not really sure why the referees allowed that, it didn't uh, look as if there was a foul to me, but... Uh, well, yeah, Talia's work in some ways rendered academic because the referee then awarded a free kick. But uh, Talia wasn't to know that and produced some fine reactions to deny Ewan Roberts. <laughs> Robinson thrashing this one across. And cleared only to Mark Walters, can he make room for the shot? Blocked, but there's Haller! A brilliantly driven in equaliser from Kevin Haller! We can see the balls played into the box, there's a heavy clearance, it comes back, Walters goes for his shot, it's blocked again. James Smith comes there and uh, Horlock strikes it well and it's through the goalkeeper's leg. A, a fine strike, hard and low, difficult for the keeper. Good run had been made by Foley, pulls it back for ball. Seagraves met him well, this is Atkins. Foley had come back too far and Walters. Tangling with Froggart. It's interesting, in the last uh, five minutes or so, Mark Atkins has gone into midfield and Wolves are playing with a back four now. And uh, obviously they've decided to take a bit more initiative on the attacking front. And it beats Horlock Foley! What a dream for the substitute! After conceding a first ever home defeat against Wolves, October begins against a Bradford side destined for a long battle against relegation. to may capitalise just past the post. Alison leading the line well, finds O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan again, almost caught in possession, bounces free to Leach. Alison's header. Coe takes it on the run, shoved off the ball, penalty! Fighting header into Steve Coe's path. Let the defender knocked him off the ball. And Walters with a chance to score from the spot. Just. Could be problems here. Appeals for the penalty from the home crowd. They're upheld. We've got there ahead of Kevin Horlock. Brings the player down, says the official. Sass, goal. Robinson heads it away. Alfred still pushing forward. 
shut. Yes! Stephen, what do you feel quite emotional after a game like that? Uh, emotional is probably the wrong word. There's a number of words that come to mind, but uh, I'm very disappointed. Very disappointed. What other words do you use to describe the night? Well, I've already mentioned it to the players. So, uh, uh, I might get into trouble if I start, if I start using any words that you want me to use. No, I'm just wondering how you feel, because it certainly was a game that you could have won. Of course, I'm very upset. I'm very upset with, uh, with the way we played, especially. The decisions are there. Um, albeit, OK, everyone can blame referees and everything else. But uh, I don't think we were, we were that good tonight. I'm not wanting you to be controversial, but does it concern you that people leave grounds talking more about referees these days than matches, perhaps? Again, I'm more concerned about my team. Our team tonight didn't, didn't perform the way I wanted them to. So you, you get your breaks uh, when, you, when you need them. You get your luck when you need them. Um, but you've got to earn the right. Um, we didn't tonight. and um, I'm not even going to get into the debate about referees. Mm -hmm. It's more than there. There, there. there was enough people here tonight to have seen that. Cameras are here. They've seen it. So uh, let, let them judge for themselves. OK. And yet the night started well enough for you with the first goal. That's right. You can't ask for a better start away from home. Go one and up. 20 minutes, you think you've uh, you've kept the crowd fairly quiet. You've uh, you've done what you had to do. You've got your noses in front, and then for some reason or other, we cannot keep our noses in front for too long. Now Sullivan, Walters with the header and chipped away. Terrific save then by Whitehead. The header looked to be harrowing into the corner before Whitehead's intervention. He's gone in front of Les Robinson there, and a flying save by Whitehead. Walters closest to a goal so far for Swindon. It goes Horlock! And it's squeezed over the line. Kevin Horlock! Well, moments earlier, Whitehead had performed heroics to keep out the header from Walters, but this time he's beaten by the sheer power of the header from Kevin Horlock. His third goal of the season. The Robins back on song with their first win in three matches. And further progress is made when Peter Thorne makes a dramatic return in Swindon's second home match in five days. Walters has got the better of Cowan. Got the better of Francis too. He's a killer of the rest, Mark Walters, and he's opened the scoring against Huddersfield. And he just sets himself for the cross. Thorne's header celebrates his recall with the goal. 2-0. The cross split the defenders. Thorne made no mistake. Set four. Slides it wide just to Robinson. Alison Volley. 3 0. The Terriers are being taken apart. Inevitably, the Chief will be on the goal sheet. And there it is, the third. Paulock's on to something here. Charges down Sinnott's clearance. Paulock with the keeper to beat. As cool as you like, Kevin Horlock makes it Swindon Town 4, Huddersfield 0. It's a celebration with a difference. And that's why he's getting rave reviews. It's his fourth goal in as many home league games. Kevin Horlock for Swindon Town. Ryan Hawk and Simon must have wondered what hit them in their half-time team talk. Allison shot, just taken off his boots. Thorne, it's five! will be consulting the record book soon. Peter Thorne lets a brace on his recall to the side. Each keeper Francis all ends up. Here's Walters again teasing and tormenting the defence. He's got to the byline. Thorne a hat-trick. 6-0 Swindon Town. Six goals in 20 minutes. Thorne doesn't miss them from there. 
Huddersfield no match for the rampant Robins. That's the biggest win of the season by some distance. Not surprisingly, expectations are high when McMahon's men take on Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. Dyer and Culverhouse together, both on the deck. Which way does the referee see it? Penalty. Frank Carlyer leads the protest. I have made six and a half of the other, but Dyer's up to take the penalty and score. 1 0 to the Eagles. Four. And again. Still Peter Thorne. Mm, just wide. Think they've done the hard part. Walter's free kick. Allison's header. Swin and Tan's equaliser. It's 1 1. Being tough, all square. Leach. Thorn. Goal! 2 1 Swindon Town. Could this be Crystal Palace's first defeat since the opening day of the season? Leach supplied the cross. Thorn with the header. Chance for Viet. Over the top. Roberts. Waters could be in trouble here. He's already been booked for time wasting. Roberts and Waters together, separated by the assistant referee. Here's the referee, red card, and Mark Walters, the early back. Probably can't complain about that decision. After three straight wins, Swindon fancy their chances when they go to Old Trafford in the Coca-Cola Cup. And the Robins turn in a good display against the champions. A crowd of just under 50,000 packs Old Trafford for the third round tie. This is Wayne Allison. Tries to draw Philip Neville out of position. He's got a good ball in here to Walters. Oh, and Howe had to make a smart stop. Driven into his midriff, but he still managed to control the ball. There was Peter Thorne waiting in the middle here for Swindon Town. Watch the number nine who got, just got away from David May. Paborski. Thornley links up with Scholes. Paborski now for Manchester United, and that's 1 0. Paborski scores after 19 minutes. A sweeping move by Manchester United involving Ben Thornley and Paul Scholes and finished off with some style by the Czech Republic international Karol Paborski. It was a move of great simplicity but of great art. And look at Paborski who roamed free of the Swindon Town defence and gives Manchester United the lead. Scholes was the architect of the goal, but Paborski's finishing was exemplary. Pollock. This is Walters. Elkins in support. Walters chips to the back post. Oh, terrific save by Van der Howe. Look at this ball by Mark Walters. Swept into the box, but aimed away from the goalkeeper and Thorne almost equalises and got clear by Chris Casper son of former Burnley striker Frank Casper Walters this is Swindon's first attack of this second period They've won a corner, right in front of their fans. Here's 
is this where Swindon hit Bear? Walters to take the corner kick. Seagraves is up there. It's played to the back post. Seagraves. And a goal for Swindon Town who are level. Peter Thorne on target after six minutes of the second period. I can smile at last. Seagraves got a vital header in there. It was never really clear. And Thorne just hooked the ball in. Thorne with an acrobatic leap to send the ball wide of van der Howe. and Swindon Town have breathed new life into this cap tie Keane Manchester United will be hoping that Keane can get hold of this game by the scruff of its neck Thornley Thornley's shot is Beaten away. A bit of uncertain defending now by Swin, and this is Keane. He has the beating of Leach. Skulls! United are in front! Paul Skulls on target. And on that occasion, there was little Frank Tamir could do in the Swindon Town goal. It was a terrific drive by Paul Scholes. And didn't Fergie enjoy that one? Lovely ball by Keane and Scholes made space for himself to squeeze the ball between the upright and just inside the netting. Super finish by Scholes. Steve, any complaints about the result? Well, not really, not on reflection. Once they got the second goal, um, it demoralised the team a little bit because I thought we'd done ever so well up until they got the second goal. And I honestly thought we could have got something out of the game then, once we equalised. But uh, they had enough chances after that to have uh, won it quite comfortably, really, maybe three or four. But having said that, up until then, I was, I was delighted with our performance. In fact, your goalkeeper had an outstanding game, didn't he? Oh, he had a great game, yes. Especially as the game went on because they were carving us open slightly. We were. We, we were tired, we, um, they've got so much movement, such, such great movement uh, the, the, uh, in the team right through. But I think the second goal was a killer and uh, everyone's heads dropped a little bit. More disappointment followed at Elm Park, where Swindon were beaten by a double from Trevor Morley. Mark Walters came closest to scoring for the Robins, but McMahon's men were destined to finish goalless. It was a different story, but the same result at home to West Brom. Watson, Oof. good save by the keeper. Paul Allen. Outside, inside, and beats the keeper at the near post. Paul Allen scored for Swindon Town and wants to celebrate with those faithful fans in the Intel stand. Walters in some space. Audacious effort over the top. Holmes. It's gone in! What's Frank Talia doing on his goal line? Now he's picking the ball out of the back of the net from Paul Holmes' right wing cross. There appeared no danger. Pesky Salido. He's got pace here. He's thrown the keeper, the Canadian international. Scored! It's 2 1 to West Bromwich Albion. Elkins. Ooh, Crichton almost caught in no man's land. Now Allison. Saved. Sneakers could be onto something here. Sneakers into the 18 yard box. Thumps it home. 3 1 to the Baggies. Swimming time. World winning this match, let me remind you. Now Coe. 
Thorn, a consolation goal. Peter Thorne's late strike can't disguise a bitterly disappointing performance. McMahon makes no less than seven changes for the showdown with his former club Manchester City. A matchup marks the return of Fraser Digby, who makes his first start of the season. Beach. Nice ball through to Allison. Now then, Allison trying to go around his man. Penalty given! Well, Allison up against uh, Kit Simons there. Well, Andy Dibble made a famous penalty save in the Luton's 1988 League Cup final win over Arsenal at Wembley. What's he going to do here up against Kevin Horlock? He saved from Winterburn on that famous occasion. Now he's up against Kevin Horlock and he saves again! Oh, still nil-nil! Good. Up goes Horlock. Cleared by Wickley. Well won by Darris. He read that well. Three men just by the six yard box. Here's Allison. Oh, he's there. Yes. He got a second bite. And Allison shoots Swindon Town into the lead. 51 minutes into this game. It's Swindon 1. Manchester City nil. The ball came in. Allison tried to swing, tried to hit the shot. He missed it completely. It bounced there. He got a second chance and whacked the ball into the roof of the net. And Andy Dibble was absolutely furious. Eight points left. And Swindon leading by just one goal to nil. Tense battle, Co making the run. He's got in behind the goal. Rick gets the ball across. Oh, 2 0! Allison's the scorer. But put it down to Steve Coe. That was a tremendous run by Coe. Got in behind Eddie McGoldrick. And surely it's all over for Manchester City. It's Swindon Town 2, Manchester City 0. How hard is it to make so many changes and get a performance like that? Very difficult because obviously if the result doesn't go right then uh, um, they're all going to be asking me questions and the opposite to what you're saying now. You know, they're going to say, well, hang on a minute, don't you think you made too many? Don't you think he should have stayed in? Don't you think... He, he, that's what I'm here for, to make decisions like that and, and to, to do it. And yeah, It hurts, it hurts, but I've got to be fair to the players who, who didn't play on Wednesday night. One of the pleasing performances, Kevin Horlock, an outstanding performance. He was magnificent, Kevin. He, uh, he has been in, in a number of positions, so I can't complain about Kevin. You know, he's... Uh, He's he's done a different different job for me in a lot of, a lot of games. So he's he's got a lot of credit to come out with today. Lovely flick on by Finney to Allison. Now it's back with Finney. First time ball into the middle. Good header clear by Matt Appleby. And Swindon and their fans just turning up the heat a little. Robinson drives the corner in. Super header. It flashed by from Kevin Horlock and nobody else moved. Allison beaten in the air by De Zeus. Horlock peeks up the loose ball. First time crossed by Robinson. And the keeper in all sorts of trouble. Well, he did well to recover David Watson, but uh, that could have been very embarrassing indeed. Mark Robinson against his old club, he would love to have scored then. A little bit of right-hand side on the ball, completely deceived the keeper, and in the end glad to shovel it over the crossbar. Finney trying to take it first time past to Zeus. Still in play, still with Finney. Nice cross by him, flick on from O'Sullivan, Allison's in there. Wouldn't quite drop for him. It's a corner for Swindon Town. Gooden with the corner. Seagraves comes to meet it. It's behind for another corner. Walters.
come over this side to perhaps try the outswinger. Dara was there. Oh. Swindon uh, having plenty of joy in the air, not quite managing to hit the target to trouble Watson. In fact, it was Robinson who got the header in that time. And he took it on the chest. Walters did well to keep it in. Good cross. Allison's on the far post. Side netting. Well, one or two Swindon fans saw the ripple of the net and they were on their feet. I think Wayne Allison always knew it was the wrong side of the post. Walters wants to get on with it quickly. O'Sullivan. Gooden. Haven't seen too much of him this afternoon. O'Sullivan, good looking ball for Allison. Gooden's cross, Walters, and it's gone in for Mark Walters. Swindon have the lead. And celebrations all around the county ground. Well, just saying that we haven't seen too much of Ty Gooden, the first chance he gets to put in a quality cross, and Mark Walters has finished it off. For his fifth goal of the season perhaps a question mark against David Watson he got a good hand on the ball but he couldn't stop it going in and the home side are ahead and while they'll be happy with a 1-0 lead Swindon can't afford to just sit back and defend it they really need to go hunting a second they're doing it just now with Walters spots Robinson Mark Robinson and a brilliant save by Watson really did look as though Robinson was going to get the goal he craves against his old club but you have to say that's excellent work by David Watson Walters O'Sullivan great shot super save really was good work again from Watson instinctive drive by O'Sullivan and that was banned for the far corner until the keeper's left hand pushed it aside and but for David Watson Swindon would surely have sewn up the points by now as it is they still lead by just one Seagraves looks for the far post for Finney Allison battling away. Gooden might try first time. What a goal by Ty Gooden. A sensational strike. And no keeper in the world would have stopped that. And you have to say, it's no more than Swindon deserved. They really have put Barnsley under the cosh. And that is a cracking finish by Ty Gooden. It's his first goal of the season. And I'd go so far as to say that he's probably not scored a better one in his career. Really are turning it on at the moment. Allison, Wayne Allison, good stop, but it's gone in. The rebound by Steve Finney and Swindon Town are turning it into a rout. Two goals in the space of two minutes have surely sealed the win for Swindon now. Again, Watson was unlucky, made the first save, but Finney, like all good goal scorers, was sniffing for the rebound. And he's not going to miss from there. I bet you enjoyed that. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've uh, scored, you know. So, you know, I was delighted with that. You know, my dad was here and he ain't seen me score for a while. So, yeah, it's pleasing to get on the score sheet. And one of the best you've ever scored. You scored a cracking goal here, I think, last season, didn't you? Yeah, I scored a ni nice one last year. Um, yeah, I'm just pleased with it. You know, it, it comes to me. I just hit it well and uh, it just flew in for us. At Portman Road, Swindon were knocked out of their stride by a goal inside the first minute. Hip switch. Without a home win for two months now. And uh, without a whole host of players again tonight because of injuries. Oh, oh, what a goal that was! How about that for a start? Well, absolutely superb. And it came in 28 seconds. Tanner poised to come in. Naylor with the header.
Lake Shore. It's Ipswich Town 2, Swindon Town 0. Here's Walters, can he get one back here? That's a penalty. Walters tripped from behind. Penalty it is, and all the protesting in the world won't change the referee's decision. So it's Walters up against right. The fans not happy, they feel he dived. Oh, a great save by Wright! And that's a corner. Nelson Walters here on this uh, right, but it uh, was nicely cut out. Oh, and a chance here, a slip by Seagraves. And this is Naylor. Creeney's in the middle. Ulenbeek at the far post, looks for Creeney. Claims for handball, penalty given. Well, I don't think Darris could have got out of the way there. It was played on to him. Now protests from the other end. But the most important thing is, will Steve Sedgley convert the penalty? And it's 3-0 to Ipswich Town. Robinson with a free kick. Oh, it's there. Thorne got the header in. Walters. Allison with a shot. Oh, brilliant goal from Allison, but I fear that it's come too late for Swindon. Defeat at Portman Road was followed by another setback at Birmingham, where Paul Furlong scored the only goal of the match in the first half. Here's Bowen. Chip through and a shot, and the goal from Furlong. At last, the offside track was struck. The frustration continued at Bramall Lane, where Gareth Taylor made an early breakthrough for the home side. Taylor's opening goal left the Robins trailing after just six minutes. Sheffield's second on the hour condemned Swindon to a third successive away defeat. Kichuro with an inch-perfect lob, the man on target. 2-0 the final score. Injuries and suspension were leaving their mark, but Steve McMahon's weakened squad bounced back in style against Reading. into this game a brilliant near post header and Tommy Wright the Northern Ireland international goalkeeper teammates they were of course on the international field but this time Horlock gets the better of the keeper and it's Swindon 1 Reading 0 Mika Good, uh, interception there by Elkins he just knocked the ball away here's Paul Bowden knows every inch of the uh, grass here at the county ground. One of town's heroes, of course, in that uh, momentous Wembley playoff triumph over Leicester City. It took uh, Swindon into the Premiership. Jilts for the cross. Paulie header, great save! The ball is there. Oh, where was the cover? says Fraser Digby, an absolutely brilliant save from the first effort, but he couldn't keep out the follow-up, and 13 minutes into this game, it's Swindon 1, Reading 1, we really have a battle on here, Kersley, Walters, good change of direction, can he squeeze the ball across to Leach, he can, and he's outside, is he? No, the back stays down, the ball's in the net, the goal stands. Here's Kerslake. Oh, chance here for Walters! Great save! Now well, Walters puts his hands on his head. He knows maybe he should have done better. A 
again the Reading's defence was static and just watching as Walters brought it down and crashed in the shot this is Finney Sullivan tries to wiggle his way through play on says the referee Kasky comes it forward chested off by Lovell run back again by that man Scott Leach here's Walters Allison's in the middle, Walters, trickery from him, oh and he's there, Mark Walters, his sixth goal of the season, Reading's fight back is ended, the points surely secure, it's Swindon Town 3, Reading 1. Mark Walters clinching goal three minutes from time, put Swindon back in the top eight, but injuries continue to hamper the Robins' progress. Peter Thorne is the latest casualty and he misses the Valley Showdown with Charlton. It's Newton once again, in comes the cross, the far side, Lee Burns up, it's there! It's there! It was inside the post! This time Swindon pushing a couple of players outside the box, here comes the corner, Chapel's the man, heads it in. Yes, it's there! David White! Defeat at the Valley is followed by another setback at Stoke. It goes Cavada. Now Steen, he's onside. Great chance for Mark Steen! And finish with great aplomb. Robinson. Up by Waters to Wayne Allison. Cavada did well. Off goes Steen from Sheeran's pass. Is this going to be a second? There's the answer. The final match before Christmas is the home encounter with runaway leaders Bolton. Kevin Horlock returns after missing the Stoke match. Horlock. Might fall for Allison here. Now, Walters. So oh, clever chip. Brilliant goal. Such a quick piece of thinking then from Mark Waters. And that was a goal of sheer class. <laughs> 33 minutes gone, Swindon had the lead. And that was a brilliant individual goal from it's, Mark Waters. It's a beautiful goal, it's a great chip. You cannot fault the goalkeeper, he had to come. The goalkeeper had to come out to narrow the angle. Mark Waters read it. And that is a perfect chip, absolute perfection. What a superb goal. Jerry Taggart. Blake. They've got away then from Robinson. McGinley's in the middle. Nathan Blake. Yeah! And it's gone in. Well, how on earth did he squeeze it in from there? Well, it looks as though it's come off of of Fraser Digby. Uh, odd goal from up here, we can't really see, but it looks as though Blake's fired it in low, it's hit Digby and gone in. It'll be interesting to see whether that is the result as we saw it. I felt he should have crossed it there and then, uh, Nathan Blake, but he's gone on, he's taken it again round past and, oh no, it's a goal by, it's off Scott, Green. by Scott Green. Lake. Just be a bit more aware, yeah. Now Watson slipped on. Addison, he's oh, onside no. and he scored. Decisive finish from Wayne Addison. And Swindon are back in front. To be delighted of Mike Walsh. Standing in for Steve McMahon today, and I'm sure Steve watching at home will be out of his chair thumping the air. See, it was a perfect example of what we were just talking about. Allison held up his run. He held it up and he got the reward. Green. You better not give it to McGinley, the crowd will go positive. <laughs> Here's Sheridan to Blake. More danger for Swindon. The save, and there is McGinley! He couldn't accept the chance that came his way. But well, the danger hasn't passed. It goes McGinley now. No offside. McGinley and Green. And between them, 
they force another equaliser. Well, I, I don't know whether it was McGinley or Green. It, obviously, McGinley's... Uh, this is the McGinley miss that we can see, and oh, he has missed that dreadfully, hasn't he? Swindon denied by the side destined to win the championship. But that's a much improved performance by the Robins. And the celebrations continue at Portsmouth on Boxing Day. Oh, and that's a poor clearance from the Haven. And what was he playing at? And a big chance here for Cole. And Aaron Haven is distraught. And the knockers of the young goalkeeper will be putting another tick into their box. So Haven, look at the poor man. In the FA Cup, the Robins landed a third round trip to Goodison Park, where Wembley hopes were shattered after just 52 seconds. Ian Culverhouse thought he'd come to the rescue when he blocked a shot by Andrei Konchelskis on the goal line. The referee Neil Barry ruled Culverhouse had handled a penalty to Everton and Swindon were down to 10 men. Kinchelskis made it 1-0 from the spot and it was downhill from there on in. Mark Walters gifted Everton goal number two when his back pass was intercepted by Nick Barmby. Fraser Digby was given no chance as the former England star took his chance to make it 2-0. When Duncan Ferguson opened the second half with a third Everton goal, it looked like Swindon were heading for a real thrashing. But the home side were denied further celebration despite a red card for Gary Elkins that left Swindon with just nine men for the final quarter of an hour. The Robins were back on Merseyside six days later for a league encounter with Tranmere Rovers. And it was another uphill battle when Pat Nevin opened the scoring for the home side midway through the first half. Five minutes after the break, Swindon trailed 2-0 when Nevin's cross was glanced home by Dave Higgins, Fraser Digby wrong-footed by an effort that went in off the far post. Swindon dug deep and battled back with a spirited display that yielded a fine goal in 63 minutes. When Chamia failed to clear Kevin Watson's free kick, Kevin Horlock reduced the deficit to two goals to one. A fine strike by the Irish international that set up a grandstand finish. Both sides could have scored in the closing stages, but the final drama came when Fraser Digby conceded the penalty. Kenny Irons was in full flight when he went down as he steered past Digby. Swindon claimed the Rovers substitute had dived the protest didn't impress the referee, but Digby had the final say when he kept out Pat Nevin's spot kick. A super save by the Robins keeper, but it didn't change the final outcome. Chamir claiming all three points. At home to Bradford, Steve McMahon made a surprise comeback. The player boss starting his first league match in over a year. Here's Hamilton again, chance for Watson who missed his kick, Jacobs, and Jacobs has scored for Bradford City. Go away from Hamilton, gets the cross in, Horlock's header, superb goal, Kevin Horlock, his seventh of the season, and Swindon Town have the perfect start to the second half. The fans who were displeased with the first half, really getting into the swing of it now, so too Horlock. His seventh of the season and a header which gave the keeper no chance at all. Beautifully picked out by Steve Coe. Keeper may have got a touch, certainly hit the upright, but no way it was staying out. And it's back all square at 1-1. Now Drysdale has room left side. Good chance for Swindon. Horlock's header flashed wide. Real chance. Horlock can't believe that's not his second and Swindon's second. A superb move, it only needed the faintest of touches and Horlock couldn't quite get enough on the ball to divert it home. Marlon Brooms joins the Robins on loan from Blackburn and makes his debut in a dramatic contest against Grimsby. And finding Appleton, he's got these just dragging him back a little bit and the referee will award a free kick. Certainly just a bit of shirt pulling from Scott Leach. Here's Gallimore, and that is Gallimore, and that's 1-0 Grimsby. Just three minutes gone, and Grimsby have the lead. 
cracking free kick. He struck it right in the middle of the boot, and Digby had little chance. Going to be really battling for every ball in this first half. It has been a good first half for them. This is Mendonca. He's got a couple of players running in the middle. Adams Appleton. This is Appleton, and it's 2-0. On the stroke of half-time, Grimsby have doubled their lead. It wasn't the best defending in the world. Two players going in, and Appleton had the better of both of them, and Crazy Digby as well. Allison bundled to the ground. Benny doesn't think it was too unfair. It was Tony Gallimore. And Sweden have a free kick in a pretty good position here. Allison, you know, certainly a push on the back. Not too much doubt about that. This is Kevin Horlock looks favourite to take it. Yes. And makes it 2 1. Horlock again. He just can't stop the man at the moment. His eighth ball of the season, and a beautiful free kick. And lots of plenty of clubs interested in the hall at the moment, and that can only increase with goals like that. Three awards a free kick. Steve McMahon emphasising the urgency, racing onto the pitch to get things moving. Walters gets things moving as well with a quick free kick. Co with the ball, hall -off. 2-2, Swindon back on level terms, and Wayne Allison has scored his 11th goal of the season. Got his spear goal before the start of the game, and he's delivered the goods as well. Ball off again involved, no surprise there. Was it coaching from Wayne Allison, Fiji the defender of the ball. Swindon back on level terms. Donker with a good chance. Didn't make the most of it. Got goal side of Marlon Brooms. Just couldn't get enough elevation on the ball. Good looking ball from Leach trying to find Allison. Robinson will find the big man. Need some support from someone. Robinson is there. Managed to get the cross in. Ball up. All going to bubble around. Surely someone's going to get on the end of it. High up into the skies by the defender. And here's Walters. 3 2. Swinging the done it. 3 in 18 minutes. Unbelievable stuff. The half time team caught whatever it was from Stephen Mark has certainly worked. And Swindon Town, extraordinary, had the lead. Pretty awful defending. Nothing wrong with the finish though for Walters. Back from injury and scoring again. Cracker from eight yards with the volley. Half cleared by Gallimore. So with the ball that was deflected back to him. This is Walters. Set up for the shot. Good save for the keeper. Always a comfortable height for him. Just himself well by Mark Walters. Watson, trying to find Wayne Allison, defended it well though, here's Michael Appleton, and here is Mendonca, 3-3, well this game really has had a number of twists in the tail, Mendonca getting between two defenders, completely unmarked, and beating Fraser Digby at the far post. At Molyneux, the Robins were beaten by the only goal of the game, scored 10 minutes before half-time. Chance here for Seaball! 1-0! Defeat at Molyneux is a sad farewell for Kevin Horlock. The talented Irishman is on his way to Manchester City for one and a quarter million pounds. Meanwhile, with the Robins squad hit by a flu bug, player boss Steve McMahon starts his second match of the season. Alex Smith. Steve Coe. Ooh, not too far away. It's a corner with a difference. McMahon back to Alex Smith. Elkins header. Goal! The blades blunted. Swindon Town 1, Sheffield United 0. 
Elkins. Good goal. Wrong end. David Holdsworth, own goal. White's flick. Holdsworth header. And the villain is temporarily turned hero. At home to Queen's Park Rangers, the drama all happened in the final minutes of the first half. Swindon took the lead and Steve Cow diverted Mark Robinson's drive past Rangers keeper Jürgen Sommer. But the Robins lead was short-lived. 90 seconds later, Rangers were back on level terms, courtesy of a point-blank header by Mark Haightley, his first league goal of the season, making the final score 1-1. Next stop is the Hawthorns, where Ray Harford is the new West Brom manager. Walters. Got the cross in, it needed. Daryl Burgess to head the ball away. Robinson. Allison, he's hit the crossbar. And Swindon just give Albion a reminder that there are two teams out there. Taken quickly. Walters, left footed, in it goes. Allison with the header, and it's in there. Under Paul Crichton. Mark Walters has been delivering some quality balls in all afternoon and Allison, who has looked the danger, got in there and headed the ball in past Paul Crichton, who really had no chance. Hamilton. Butler. Hamilton's cross. Oh, and the referee has awarded a penalty for Andy Hunt against Digby. Puts it in, and West Bromwich Albion equalise. Walters. Oh, and Allison's got a free reign here, and it's in. Alex Smith. They left Allison at the back post. He headed it back across goal. And it was the simplest of tappings, really. A precious first ever goal for Alex Smith. At Main Road, Swindon has sunk by two former players and a red card. Kevin Horlock set the mood of the afternoon when he opened the scoring after 16 minutes. There was no way back for Swindon when Peter Holcroft was sent off before half time. City took full advantage after the break beginning with a fine individual strike by the Blues' other former Swindon star, Nicky Summerby. The Robins' defence was pulled apart one more time when Uwe Rossler claimed his third goal in three matches, Swindon well beaten by Steve McMahon's former club. McMahon's response was to splash £400,000 on signing Darren Bullock from Huddersfield. And the Robins' new signing made a dream start against Birmingham, Bullock opening the scoring after 12 minutes. Birmingham hit back midway through the first half, Gary Ablett made it all square, a fine strike rifled home by Ablett when Swindon failed to clear. But then came a breathtaking strike from 19 years old Marlon Brooms. What a way to celebrate your first ever goal. A magnificent effort by Brooms against the hometown club that rejected him. A magical moment to savour. Swindon were on their way to victory and Steve Cow made certain when he added goal number three in the second half. Allison denied by a brave save by Ian Bennett, for there was Cow to guarantee victory. 3-1 to Swindon was how it ended. A great win for the Robins, and there was more joy at home to Charlton, when Wayne Allison grabbed the all-important goal after 69 minutes. Goal number 13 for the Robins' leading marksman. In the fog at Oakwell, promotion chasing Barnsley set the pace when they took the lead 10 minutes before half-time. Neil Redfern putting the home side on the score sheet. But the Yorkshireman held the advantage for less than six minutes. Peter Thorne made it all square when he stranded David Watson with a splendid looping header. A well-deserved point against a team destined to finish in second place. But a cut above the rest were championship chasing Bolton, who left the Robins shell-shocked in a seven-goal blitz at Burnden Park.
Swindon had to wait seven days to take their frustration out on Stoke City. Peter Thorne struck what proved to be the winner in the 26th minute. Victory was marred when Wayne Allison was sent off after a harmless looking tussle with defender Justin Whittle. Nonetheless, the Robins 10 men held on. Fraser Digby dealt comfortably with the best Stoke could muster. That was the season's final success. Injuries took their toll when Steve McMahon's men collected just two points in the final eight matches. The only goal in that barren run scored at Boundary Park by Steve Cow, and that was little consolation for the Robins as they crashed to a 5-1 defeat. The season ended with a goalless draw at Huddersfield, Swindon completing the campaign in 19th position. The all-important goal of staying in Division 1 achieved. Mission accomplished for Steve McMahon. The season ended on a high note for long-serving Fraser Digby, the popular keeper claiming his second Player of the Year trophy in his 10 years at the county ground. Digby's award, the perfect way to celebrate his personal milestone. The wicket keeper prevented it. Good save, Fraser Digby. Shot comes in, Owen. Tipped over the top by Digby. 